So I'm uh, Dr. Stuart Mitchell, I'm the CEO at Dyke Technology. Um, we're a company that uh, attempts to take high performance computing as a service and deliver it to industry, academics, a whole range of different uh, organisations who just need large amounts of compute. So we use vast. I'm the slightly crazy physicist in our company. Um, I will take pretty much anything and put it in immersion. Uh, and certain uh, GPU vendor was very surprised that I was taking their GPUs without them knowing and immersing them and, and running them for about a year before they even started looking at immersing their GPUs. So um, I, will, I will do it with anything. I, phones work in it, it's fine. Um, but uh, as I said, we, we've been a vast user since before you came out of stealth mode. It was right around that time. And oh, it was did. the testing actually which convinced us. So we were a huge luster house. Our CTO at the time was Phil Schwann, so he wrote, I think he's still probably the leading author of all of Luster. Um, and uh, he was the one who decided we're going to go and do this crazy vast thing. And for us, the critical component um, was we wanted to get away from a client-based kernel module to be able to run our file system. Now, we wanted to be able to upgrade our kernel of our client. And that was, all, that was like one of our prime desires to... to to be able to do on our clusters was to be able to upgrade that client without that, you know, oh, I've got to upgrade Luster client, oh crap, does that version work with that version of the so, server? And, and all of this stuff, we just wanted to have something really simple. And so that was, that was our primary thing we wanted to do. We also wanted to move away from um, some lovely user doing a really bad operation on the file system affecting everyone. We wanted to stop the phone call going in the office, whose job's doing X, Y, Z? Right? And so we just wanted no impact. If someone does something crappy, that's fine. That's their problem, and it shouldn't impact others. So that was the second thing we wanted to be able to achieve. So we, we, we tested it, and we ran lots of micro benchmarking, and that was fantastic. Then we broke it, and this was the real clincher for us. We broke the file system, completely broke the file Massive system. Massive corruption. But the most important part was, within three days, we had access to that data again. Our problems were resolved, and since me being allowed to reuse the system, we've never been able to break it in a way ever again. Yeah. And for us, that was, you know, we'd, we'd been sold, people have been trying to sell us support for our Lustre systems for a decade. And um, we'd never taken it because no one would ever commit to fixing our problems. We're a production house. Computers down money. We're losing money. Right? And so we need it up. We need it up all the time. And if we can't get it up, we will find a way to fix it within you know, 24, 48 hours. That's just our motto. And uh, these VAST helped us. We got all our data back. We had to do a few fancy things to do it, but we got access to all of our data again, and we were able to get back up and running really quickly. And that has been the way it's gone for the last almost four years. Any oh. problem we have, it's fixed within a couple of days. And so VAST is on that journey with us and that support. Um, so that, that, for us, was the real clincher to saying, right, here's a, here's a company who backs themselves to be able to fix problems and backs it in a production timeline. And... Uh, that sold us, we've been on, and I would like to be able to say, and I, I've, I've tried to find stats for that, for what I'm about to say um, in our logs and all sorts of things, but I don't think we've had an outage with VAST in almost four years of continuous production. And wait, 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 how many compute nodes do you have? We have about uh, 15,000 compute nodes or servers pounding away 24 hours a day, seven days a week on tens of petabytes of, of storage. Um, and I don't think we've had a downtime due to VAST. We've had downtime due to other things, but nothing due to VAST, I think, in probably four years, three and a half years. But then you have a, an, an admin that worked at the organization. Let's call him Steve. Uh, and <laughs> Steve uh, decided to up and leave and go be a greedy uh, you know, hedge fund guy. And so, um, so and we, we talked about helping you find his replacement. Do you remember this conversation? Yeah, so um, we didn't need to find a replacement, it turns out. We can run the file system, uh, tens of petabytes of storage across three continents, um, with in essence just our standard IT team. Yep, no, no admin. No admin at all, no storage admin at all. No storage architecture person, no storage admin person. It's an appliance, you plug it in, it works. We've been working a lot with the academic community as a, as a cloud service provider, and um, we work a lot with a, an astrophysics group out of Curtin University, and they had a, years, six, seven years worth of data they need to process and um, their code wasn't getting through it on public infrastructure uh, and so we, they brought the code to us, we made it run well, 125 times faster um, 
And then we, that allowed them to process their huge backlog of data in just a few hours. Now, interestingly, that sounds great, and they've got lots of pa they've got a paper and lots of citations and more money on, on the back of all of this. But on, from a data perspective, um, we just completely changed the way we thought about the data. And that's really the key. You know, you, you, they were pulling all sorts of stunts to try and manipulate the data because it was sitting on a particular parallel file system. And if you don't have to do that, if you can reimagine how you run the data and, and deal with it how you want to deal with it, you change the way you write your code and you can really accelerate how it goes. And that, that directly impacted um, research funding for them. And that, that, you know, it's a little bit of a chain. It was a nine month chain from getting a paper out, 90 citations, application for funding, et cetera. But that, that's the real impact that it makes to people um, just from a storage system. And we see the same with life sciences. We see a lot of life sciences people, one, they're usually not allowed on national facilities, right, because they are known for not being particularly nice to file systems. Uh, <laughs> and they, they, then to get around that, you know, they've had other people help them, and it's all, you know, they tar files up, and they tar up all these millions of small files, and then they untar them onto a local scratch file system or a loopback mounted file system, and then they do this, and then they do this. When we run it, we go, just leave it on the storage, uncompressed, uh, don't bother tarring it up, just lay out your few million files, remove all this complexity from your workflow and just run with it. And it, they can run 20 times faster just because they're not forever, you know, copying the data across, you know, a big tar file across the network onto a compute node and then uncompressing it and all that wasted time. And while they're doing that, the compute node's sitting idle. Uh, and so just being able to access their data again, how they want it, uh, massively changes their workflow, accelerates what they want to do, and uh, removes a lot of complexity from their lives. Thank you.